This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace helps you build beautiful websites and online stores with the marketing and analytics to support businesses big and small. It's honestly my favorite all-in-one platform to build an online presence and to run your business. Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lizzie Pierce. I co-run a video production company with my fiance, Chris Howe. His desk is just over here. Today we're going to be shooting minimalist product photography, and I'm kind of giving this my own title. I actually came across a photo on Pinterest and I was trying to describe it to Chris, and I was like, I love that whole like minimalist product photography. You know when they use natural light instead of a softbox? And then that's how this idea was born. So I wanna teach you guys how to do the exact same thing with all the tools you have at home because all you'll need is your cameras, a couple props you have lying around. Yes, you will need a certain type of lens and we'll get to that in a minute. And of course you'll need some natural light or a window. So I'll be walking you through how I take each one of these photos today. But first we're starting this video off in the office because we need some gear. So I've picked out a couple lenses that I think are going to be perfect for this shoot. The first one that I think I'm gonna be using the most is the 90 mil macro. We also have an 85 mil f1.4. Last but not least, I always like to bring this lens out just in case. Uh, it's a 24 to 70 f2.8. It's just a really good multi-purpose lens, but I really think most of today is going to be carried out with these two guys. So all the photos today will be taken on my a7 III, which is what I'm filming myself with right now and our second angle will be shot with the A6400. So we've got extra batteries, we've got my Peak Design tripod. I actually just got this device. It's kind of like if you took this Joby tripod and then just took one of the legs and then added a clamp to the bottom. I actually use this a lot more than I use this. So I'm bringing both just in case. Now we're gonna head over to the house because we get the best natural light at home in the morning and throughout the afternoon. We face south. So we're really lucky to have big windows in our apartment and lots of natural light. We're gonna pack up, we're gonna go home, and we're gonna shoot. Welcome to our guest bedroom at home. I have assembled a few props from around the house. I've got some camera gear ready, and we're gonna start shooting inside. We may move outside in a little bit because the balcony's actually getting some really harsh light, and I think that will be the perfect environment to be able to play with light and shadow a little bit. So we'll get to that a bit later. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. The very first thing I did when preparing for this shoot is I made a Pinterest board of ideas and vibes and different photo examples that would give me some creative inspiration for my own shoot. Then I decided which jewelry I was going to shoot. So that's gonna be today's product is we're gonna shoot a couple pieces of jewelry of mine. We're shooting a couple of pieces of Soko jewelry today. They sent me these earrings, which are gorgeous. They also sent me a ring that I love and they actually put in, I asked to have the letter P for Pierce put into it and it's a pinky ring. So make sure you check out Soko Jewelry. I'll link something in the description below for the pieces that I have and then just their website in general if you wanna check them out. So that's the product that we're going to shoot today. I have a few props. We have this big marble slab. I actually use this in my bedroom to put some of my perfume bottles on. We have some fake plants, some fake lavender. Um, you've probably seen this guy in a few of my previous videos. I love holding this like close to the lens because it adds a little bit of depth and can frame your photo really nicely. We have a shirt of mine that I actually haven't worn yet because it's finally summer and I can wear it, but we're actually gonna use it as a prop for this shoot because the fabric is really nice and creamy and it has a little bit of shine to it, but not too much. It just folds really nicely and it looks like silk. So we're gonna use this. This is actually a coaster. Well, we use it to keep like the warmth in our teacups from David's Tea, but we're gonna use it as a little dish for the jewelry. I wanna say back backdrops, but they're like flat lay backdrops of all these different like textures. So this front one looks like marble, but some of them look like stone and other things. So I'm really excited to use these. Like they're all reversible too. So this one's wood and they were pretty inexpensive. And so we got a whole bunch because then you don't actually need to store like several pieces of wood in your house. You can just have a couple of really light backdrop, flat lay backdrops. 
Now I'm gonna set you guys up behind the scenes. I'm gonna figure out what my first shot is going to be and let's take some photos. So here's where we're at with everything. We've got this little fake grassy plant, my little dish. I was noticing that I was getting quite a harsh shadow here from our light source, which is the window. So adding a piece of paper, if you have it, this is literally a receipt from an order from Sephora, don't judge me. We do have like actual white card and reflectors, but they're at the office. Putting this as close to your subject as possible. Like you can even see right now how it's minimizing the shadow. There still is one, which is nice, but it just makes it a little less harsh. I've interrupted your programming because I needed a break. So here's my no BS, totally honest, heartfelt rant about Squarespace. I built my own website using Squarespace and normally I find design really challenging, but the template I chose from Squarespace made it super simple. I love how it turned out. It's clean and it's a great framework to support my portfolio. But the best part has to be that I literally built it myself. I didn't have to hire anybody else to do that. And when I run my own business, every expense counts, okay? <laughs> and it's so easy for me to go back in and make customizations and make updates regularly. I love the platform. My favorite features are that I can log in, get analytics about my digital products that I sell in my online store, and they make marketing super simple. I actually just discovered their promotional pop-up and announcement bar feature, and it's great. It's so easy to use. I just love that so many of these features are already built in. And when you run your own business, I don't have a lot of extra time in the day. I don't wanna spend a lot of time learning a new platform. So I just love how intuitive it is. Now here's where you come in. One, head over to Squarespace and take advantage of their free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here, or it'll also be linked in the description box below for you to click on to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And number two, if you don't have a website, make one. And I'll have a video linked up here as to why you should. Now we're gonna move on to our second shoot. A really good rule of thumb when you're shooting with natural light is to have your light source coming this way. So it actually looks a bit nicer not to shoot straight on because when you're using your little bounce piece of paper, you're filling it from the side and from the front a little bit because it should be curved. And actually what I can use, which is a bit better, is if you use your card in a semicircle, but mainly on one side, so your subject won't entirely be backlit and then you shoot almost towards the light source and then have your texture or whatever your background is. So I've been basically shooting like this and um, it looks great. So subject, light source, bounce, you. Another thing that I almost forgot to tell you, I was using one of these earrings, but you could use really anything to prop up the ring a little bit. So I just slid it under the fabric and it was just enough that I could position the ring on top of it. I mean, you could use a little piece of cardboard or like whatever you have handy just to be able to lift it a little bit to see the front of the ring. Cause when it's lying down flat, it's kind of hard to see the face of the ring and usually all of the detail is on top. So yeah, that's a good idea. You could either use one of your props or your, a piece of cardboard would work really well too. Can you stop? So this stuff I had at the house because, so it's orthodontic wax. It's mainly used for if you have braces and it's kind of cutting the sides of your mouth. And I have some because I have a permanent retainer on the bottom of my mouth and one of like the wires is kind of broken and because it's COVID, I can't get it fixed. So I've been putting this on it. So I happen to have this handy. Normally you could use a little bit of hot glue, but that's at the office right now. And I just thought it would be kind of messy when I could take like a very small, precise amount of this and place it on the earrings. And I'm placing it, you could use tweezers, but I can't find mine. So I'm using, they're technically nail clippers, but they're just like really intense, but they're very precise at the end, which I like. So I've been using these to place them. And so that's how I stuck this one upright because it would not sit that way otherwise. So now I'm just getting the lighting right. I'm kind of shooting the opposite direction that I was before, just because I want to actually see some of the light reflect on this front earring. It looked a little bit dark the other way. So I've turned the whole setup around. Now the light source is behind me and we're gonna see what it looks like.
So we're moving outside now. I've got a little setup going on. We brought our props. So I'm using some jewelry that's a little bit chunkier so it'll cast more of a shadow. So we've got a book, we've got the marble slab, we've got a plate, we've got that little dish that the rings go in. We have the fern that we're gonna use to cast some shadows around our subject. And the railing right here is actually casting a really nice harsh line. So I'm probably gonna work with that too for a couple of photos. Uh, yeah, let's get shooting. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. That is all for today. Those are my final photos that I shot. I hope that you like them. Again, this is one of my few attempts at minimalist natural light product photography, if you will. I had so much fun shooting these photos and I hope that you'll take this as some inspiration of the different types of photography that you can try and practice and do at home and you enjoyed um, the few tips that I was able to give you through this video. So if you like this video, please give it a like down below. It would mean so much to me. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Uh, that's a big one because I post videos every week if you guys didn't know. So thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.